I think if you uh, work out what sort of insurance premium we should pay for asteroids, you multiply the uh, consequences by the probability, uh, then you would estimate it's worth spending a few hundred million pounds or dollars a year in defending against asteroids. I should say that the main uh, thing we have to worry about are the rare big ones. Your chance of being killed by an asteroid is not much less than your chance of being killed in an air crash. There's a lot more of space to explore and a lot more to learn when we do. And by 2025, we expect new spacecraft designed for long journeys to allow us to begin the first ever crewed missions beyond the moon into deep space. So we'll start, we'll start by sending astronauts to an asteroid for the first time in history. Astronomical objects like asteroids and comets have such destructive power that they can dramatically change the Earth's structure, atmosphere, and forever changing the lives of its inhabitants. The Earth has seen many species rise to life and fall to extinction. This can be due to sparse resources and overzealous predators. The Earth is about four and a half billion years old. We would have been hit by lots and lots of asteroids and comets over our history. I think the leading theory for how Earth's oceans formed was that the water was brought here on asteroids. So it was asteroids impact that originally formed the oceans that, you know, that allowed life to evolve. So the effect of asteroids on the Earth's history really can't be overstated. 65 million years ago, the Earth was populated by monsters giant reptiles who roamed the Earth's forests and swampy plains. But one time, the Earth was smashed by an asteroid at 40,000 miles an hour and unleashing over 100 trillion tons of TNT power. There was a very big asteroid strike in the Gulf of Mexico, which completely changed the biosphere and caused like lots of very big species to go extinct. The asteroid caused you know, huge dust clouds to go into the atmosphere that blocked the sunlight and that caused a global cooling that killed off plant life. And if that happened again, there's, you know, I think we'd be in trouble. So with such massive threats roaming the uncharted waters of space, Let's ask the question of what would happen to the Earth were we to suffer a second major impact and what we as its inhabitants can do about it. Devastation caused by an asteroid does really depend on its size. Asteroids are going incredibly fast. They can be going at you know, many, many thousands or tens of thousands of miles an hour. So something that's maybe 100 metres across, which is you know, relatively small as asteroids go, if it hits something like London or New York, it could cause a huge amount of devastation, maybe like getting hit by a nuclear weapon or something. Equally, something could hit something that's very, very sparse. Like maybe a hundred years ago, a relatively large asteroid hit the Russian wilderness, just flattened hundreds of miles of forest. Something many, many miles across, like comparable to the thing that killed the dinosaurs, uh, we could well not survive that. Using a simple setup, we are able to demonstrate the effect an asteroid has when making a contact with the Earth's surface, using a rock and some flour. The rock will replicate the mass of an asteroid as it hits into the Earth's surface and the flower will recreate the Earth's outer layer. So, let's see what happens. If we want to be able to predict whether an asteroid is a danger to us, what we have to have is a survey of all the asteroids in the sky whose orbits cross the Earth's orbit. And at the moment, we have a survey which is fit pretty complete for the big asteroids, the ones which are more than a few hundred meters across, but only 2% complete for asteroids down to 50 meters across and 50 meters 
is still about as bad as the uh, impact in Siberia, the Tunguska event, which destroyed uh, trees over hundreds of square kilometers. There are projects that should enable us to do that within 10 years. And that's important because if you can monitor the orbit of an asteroid accurately enough, then it might be possible to deflect it. You can either destroy the asteroid and blow it to pieces in some way, or you can push it off targets. Because you might think that uh, you could dis deflect an asteroid by letting off some sort of bomb on one side of it. But uh, of course, if it's very fragile, then you may break it up into lots of pieces, which would collectively do more damage than the asteroid would left in one piece. So we've got to be careful when we have the technology to uh, deflect an asteroid to make sure we use it properly and understand enough about what the asteroids are made of. Pushing that off course is probably one of the best things to do because especially if you can get in early even a relatively small amount of push like compounded over months and months and months could easily just make the asteroid miss the air. So there are some proposals that you know if we saw an asteroid coming to hit the earth we could just like put a, a rocket engine or a solar sail or something on it that would you know exert a very very gentle push over a few months that would eventually make it miss the earth. But impact events, although they have changed the course of evolution on our planet, are still very predictable. Asteroid impacts don't really keep me awake at night. They are the risk that we can most easily quantify. Asteroid big enough to destroy much life on Earth impacts once every few tens of millions of years, like the one that killed the dinosaurs. But we know that smaller asteroids, as bad as an atomic bomb, will impact maybe every few years. The good thing about the asteroid risk is that we understand it very well and it's feasible to actually have technology to deflect an asteroid that is on a collision course with the Earth. But what we can't do so easily is to predict comets because comets come in from the outer solar system. So asteroids in our solar system tend to live in a place called the asteroid belt. It's a ring of asteroids in between Mars and Jupiter and that ring is you know, relatively circular around the sun, so they are very, very predictable. Comets tend to come from the outskirts of the solar system, somewhere called the Oort Cloud, is where a lot of these comets live, and they are way beyond Pluto. So we would have less warning of a comet than we would have of a large asteroid. And moreover, uh, comets are harder to deflect, not only because they're big, but also because they don't follow a predictable trajectory. A comet, um, uh, when it starts to um, evaporate near the sun, um, it uh, throws out jets and things, and that deflects it, so it doesn't move like an ordinary particle under gravity. It's affected by these extra forces. And so it would be very hard, even if we detected a comet, to do something to deflect it. I worry rather more about the class of risks which are caused by human actions, because they're the ones which are getting greater year by year. We humans are collectively having an ever heavier footprint on the Earth, because our population is going up and we're each more demanding of energy and resources, and this is leading to possible loss of biodiversity. It's also, as we know, affecting the climate, in a way that uh, will be damaging and could be very serious if it crosses a tipping point that leads to melting of the Greenland ice cap, etc. There's a very high probability of those happening this century. And there's also a different class of risks which I worry about, which are rather different. And these are risks stemming from the uh, misuse, either by design or by accident, of very powerful technologies, but bio threats, which can be uh, uh, generated by someone in a fairly ordinary university laboratory, um, or uh, cyber threats, which already we know uh, can cause very serious damage, like shutting down the electricity grid in a big chunk of America, um, and they can be done by just one person. So I think uh, we need to worry about risks which are the downside of the new te technologies. Technologies on the whole are beneficial because they empower us and they improve our lives, but they do also give greater power to individuals or small groups. Um, and so I think that's going to lead to a greater tension between privacy, security and liberty if we want to avoid those risks. 
So what's going to happen first? A collision causing mass extinction? Or are we going to do it ourselves with the press of a wrong button?